Hello students, uh, we've been looking into the chapter of three orders where we saw that how agriculture was changing uh, the social setup within the society of Europe and primarily in England and France and uh, how uh, the enormous amount of importance uh, which agriculture had naturally uh, stemmed from the fact and it would not have been possible without the person who would own the vast tracts of lands, you know, because he would be the one who would be producing the maximum, the one who would have the most the most uh, land under his control. And yesterday we saw that uh, apart from the social factors which were uh, responsible in the 10th and the 11th and the 12th century, uh, there were certain other environmental factors also that were responsible for the social life that people led in Europe during that point in time. So today we, we yesterday we had seen the environmental reasons. Of course, today we look into land use. Okay. So initially, agricultural technology was very primitive. Yes, so uh, no surprises there. We all know that. The only mechanical uh, aid available to the peasant was a wooden plough drawn by the team of ox. We, uh, you know, something, uh, unfortunately, uh, something uh, that happens in India even today. And it does not happen in Europe anymore. But uh, yes, we are not as prosperous as them. So we continue the tradition of using animals in our field. This plough could at least, uh, at best, scratch, uh, scratch the surface of the earth and was unable to fully draw out the natural productivity of the soil. Agriculture was therefore very labour intensive. Fields had to be dug by hand, often once in four years, and enormous manual labour was needed. And also an ineffective method of crop rotation was in use. The land was divided in half. One field was planted in autumn with winter wheat, while the other field was left fallow. Fallow, that is where you allow the land to regain its fertility. Rye was planted on, its, uh, on this piece of fallow land and next year, while the other half was put to fallow. That is, you know, you, there was a kind of a crop rotation whereby you would not be utilizing or making the maximum use of the land under your control uh, all in one go. You would use half of it this time, the other half next time, and that's how you would rotate because uh, when, uh, you know, you have to understand this is something which is very, very basic and elementary that uh, even in the, in the process of farming, uh, the land needs to regain its fertility you know and you have to understand that in in those years there was nothing called fertilizers right you know everything was uh, you know man it, it was only about manure which would be with whether cow dung or the horse dung or something like that you know that's uh, that is what was the only uh, uh, ingredient which worked on to which worked towards enhancing the fertility of the soil and everyone would not be having as many number of animals to actually take care of that and far and and the other very important reason was also that it was not a market intensive thing where you know you have to understand one very important thing uh, uh, students here that today i have said this repeatedly uh, in other chapters as well you know today we live in a world whereby you do not produce anything what you consume through the day i do not produce anything that I consume through the day and rest of the people who probably would be watching this video neither do they right so but in earlier times that is about a few hundred years ago we would be producing everything we would be producing at least some of it okay uh, you know probably would be growing some vegetables probably would be growing some food grains something or the other you know probably I would be having a few cows where I would be uh, having a sufficient amount of milk for myself whereby which I would be able to sell that milk in the local market of whatever is left after my family has already consumed it and similar would be the story with the people who would be probably growing vegetables once they have consumed what they needed and the rest what is left for the day they would be selling in the market in the evening so that's how the world works so people were not very very particular about the maximum yield from the land that they had and all of that because everyone was producing something we 
today we live in a world where by you live in probably some society i live in some society you know and none of us do anything throughout the day except probably watching television and netflix and hot star um yes um, yes of course and uh, well, that is how it is so everything has to be produced in a great quantity abundant quantity so that it can be utilized by everyone because no one is producing it except the farmers so we have outsourced to that food production uh, part to a certain section of the society so um, in earlier times uh, you know you could get away with it now also in uh, you know today from today you feel that it was a very ineffective method of crop rotation and uh, you know everything was very very ancient and there was there was no progress that was being made but you have to understand one very important thing that is something which you have heard since you were uh, very young that necessity is the mother of invention they did not need it it was not necessary for them to grow in abundance right they there in 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 10th century 11th century 12th century students most of the economy was subsistence economy where you were just you were just worried about if you had sufficient um, produce for your own family and whatever was left something to be sold in the market and you were okay with it because you have to understand students no one was uh, interested there was no television there was no air travel no one had to um, uh, you know ha, ha, no one needed to have a destination wedding in masuri or goa for that matter so people were happy with whatever they had so to, from retrospectively when you look at it from uh, today's point of view it appears to be that everything was bad and they were probably living in stone ages and nothing was modern nothing was being achieved but you have to understand one very important thing that they were happy with whatever they had because they didn't quite need it uh, new agricultural technology but by 11th century there is evidence of several technological changes that were being made uh, instead of the basic wooden plows cultivators began using heavy iron tipped plows and mold boards these plows would dig much deeper and the mold boards turned the top soil properly with this the nutrients from the soil were better utilized the method of harnessing animals to the plow improved instead of the neck harness the shoulder harness came into use this enabled animals to exert greater power horses were now better shod with iron horseshoes which prevented foot decay there was increased use of wind and water energy for agriculture more water powered and wind powered mills were set up all over europe for purposes like milling corn and pressing grapes students uh, uh, you know uh, uh, i would like to explain it here i hope you can understand because i i cannot explain it on the board uh, i, I I wonder how many of you have seen, um, you know, horse uh, plowing the fields. We all have seen the oxen plowing the fields, but I wonder how many of you have seen horses plowing the fields. But you all have seen horses, of course, in life. Okay. Now, if you can understand, there is a basic difference in what a horse looks like and what an oxen looks like, and the plow that we are talking about, which we जो हल जोतने की बात करते हैं एंड द वुडन प्लाउ दैट इज देयर इफ यू हैव सीन डेफिनेटली यू हैव सीन इट फॉर इन केस ऑफ ऑक्सन यू कीप इट ऑन यू नो इट इज एक्चुअली देयर फर्मली ऑन इट्स नेक ओके एंड इट गेट्स काइंड ऑफ इट इट हैज अ वेरी नेचुरली इट काइंड ऑफ इट गेट्स ब्लॉक्ड देयर बिकॉज ऑफ द हम्प व्हिच इज देयर ऑन यू नो इट व्हिच इज देयर वेयर द नेक एंड्स okay the the natural hump which is there in oxen uh, because of which you see the plow kind of actually gets very nicely fits there but horse is not uh, uh, built by mother nature like that it has a very smooth finish right if you put any plow on it which you use an oxen you no know, the horse would just just slip through you would not be able to plow your field at all not just that the horses are not powerful enough but you would not be able to plow the field properly because it could keep slipping and it was only much later when a different kind of plow was invented 
you know whereby if you have seen if you can probably uh, look uh, look into some google or some images somewhere then you would see the basic difference between uh, uh, you know what i'm talking about essentially and that is what they are saying that now the horses were brought but they have skipped the part here that it was uh, that it became possible only when uh, a typically and a very intelligently designed plow was invented um, you know which would actually uh, fit into uh, the horses okay and then would and the plowing became possible to uh, use it you know, and, you know but of course you, you i can't blame you because we had abundance of oxen and we in india even at that point in time uh, the farmers the horses were never popular with us you know because we have always used oxen we have never used our farmers have not used horses to plow the fields they've always used used for it to you know, for transportation and everything but not to plow fields so uh, there were also changes in land use the most revolutionary one was the switch from two field to a three field system in this peasants could use uh, a field two years out of three if they planted it with one crop in autumn and a different one in spring a year and a half later uh, that meant that the farmers could break their holdings into three fields they could plant one with wheat or rye in autumn for human consumption the second could be used in spring to raise peas beans and lentils for human use and oats and barley for the horses the third field lay fallow each year they rotated the use among the three fields if you remember uh, we just covered whereby the land was divided into two whereby it was uh, you know then that's how the rotation was but now uh, that, at that point in time it was one is to one and now it became two is to one okay so when two part uh, two parts of the land that you had was under cultivation one part was get, kept fallow so that it could regain its fertility because last time you had used the same plot of land okay so this time you are allowing it to rest okay uh, with these improvements there was almost uh, an uh, immediate increase in the amount of food produced each uh, unit of land and food availability doubled the greater use of plants like peas and beans meant more vegetable proteins in the diet of the average european and a better source of fodder for the animals for cultivators it meant better opportunities they could now they could now produce more food from less land the average size for peasants farm shrank from 100 acres to 20 to 30 acres by 13th century holdings which were smaller could be more efficiently cultivated and reduced the amount of labor needed this gave the peasants time for other activities and some of these technological changes cost a lot of money peasants did not have enough money to set up water mills and windmills therefore the initiative was taken by the lords uh, but peasants were able to take the initiative in many other things such as extending arable land they also switched to the three field rotation of crops and set up small forges and smithies in the villages where iron tipped plows and horse shoes were made and repaired cheaply so uh, students uh, this is what it is tomorrow we would be starting this topic the fourth order new towns and townspeople thank you